Weekend to all, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFTs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading, the uh, 13th of March 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's see exactly where we uh, stand in terms of uh, European markets. Now, last week we had Mr. Draghi, hawkish stance, from my understanding and my reading. Mr. Draghi certainly um, indicated a, uh, a hawkish tone, and hence the reason why we've uh, witnessed the Euro USD uh, spiking to 1.07 towards Friday's session. Now, if you look at the daily chart, you have an inverted head and shoulders formation, a bull flag formation, and the inverted head and shoulders target remains at 1.0810. Okay, so let's see exactly how this plays out. We could certainly thrust higher to 1.080, which is resistance, and then previous resistance equals support around the 1.0850 zone okay bear in mind you do have this key diagonal trend line let's just see how this plays out as well in terms of the actual market now a stronger euro obviously hurts exports uh, certainly puts pressure on uh, the periphery so the likes of uh, spain uh, italy portugal uh, france etc that are all struggling to a large extent okay germany certainly is in a, a, a trade balance uh, surplus okay whilst the rest are certainly suffering. So that'll be interesting going forward. Also, given the fact that inflation is ticking higher, although the counter-argument to that is that oil prices are certainly starting to melt, okay? If oil prices continue to melt, commodities continue to melt, as you can see with regards to the price of copper here, H&S formation underway, next potential support is 2.46. In terms of the oil price as well, you certainly have a flush on the oil. Now, you do have a diagonal trend line support that's coming into play here. On oil alternatively if we could if we fail then the next potential support is seen at 47 on the uh, on the price of oil so uh, a weak oil price generally means lower inflation and given the fact that oil, oil prices really is a, a major determination of the price of inflation uh, so uh, deflationary scenario is certainly kicking in as well now obviously the price of oil uh, drop is mainly due to supply concerns number one uh, given the fact that the shale industry certainly has uh, capitalized on the OPEC cut okay and uh, until they actually come to some sort of agreement, you're going to see uh, the uh, the actual uh, shale supply increase and therefore exert further pressure on oil. Now, if the OPEC don't extend uh, the potential cuts in, in oil, which again, the first time around was very hard, then you are going to see oil flush again as well. OK, so oil can be a double edged sword. Now, dropping oil can also be interpreted as being bullish for the economy because it's classed as a stimulus. Uh, given the fact that the supply, or should we say the uh, the cost side of the equation, certainly starts to decrease, okay? Or alternatively, it can be a negative because obviously the, a lot of the uh, commodity producers are heavily weighted in terms of the indices, and indices start to suffer as well. So just bear that in mind, okay? A drop in oil doesn't necessarily mean it's bullish for the economy. It could actually signal a drop in demand going forward as well. So just bear that in mind. It depends whether it's demand-led or whether it's supply-led. At the moment, it certainly seems supply-led, so therefore, would one would interpret that as being bullish for the economy. So again, there's many facets to the fundamental uh, analysis, reading, reading of fundamental analysis, okay? Now, let's just uh, go back uh, to uh, the fundamentals for the remainder of the week. Now, over the weekend, we have had talk with regards to Mr. Theresa May triggering uh, the uh, Article 50 as, as soon as Tuesday. Uh, though uh, the uh, the actual scenarios that are coming out may well be no deal at all, okay? May well have to fall back on WTO. If that's the case, then obviously it's negative and bearish for the for the market itself. Now, Miss Merkel also uh, potentially uh, summoning uh, or uh, concocting a uh, a potential retaliation to Trump's tax plan, uh, indicating that uh, she certainly will have a tax of her own on U.S. goods. So that certainly. Uh, equates to a trade war and that certainly is net net negative for global indices so just bear that in mind uh, and china also indeed talking about potential trade war and a trade war being negative with the us so you have merkel and you have china germany and china both major trading partners indicating a potential trade war which is net net negative okay uh, now mr draghi again like i said the hawkish stance is really the overriding theme from my perspective given the fact that the euro spiked to 1.07 late friday so let's try and uh, decipher uh, in terms of the european indices the key ones and let's see exactly where they're headed now european 350 really is a good gauge of uh, the european index and let's see exactly where this stands let's start with the weekly chart of the european 350 you're in no man's land okay really the next key resistance on the european 350 is seen at 1566 
there is previous support equals resistance around this region here and here okay there was this obviously it was broken so really you're in no man's land that's all i can really concoct from there use your fibonacci retracement you've exceeded the fib 75 percent as well so really you're in no man's land there is a very strong possibility that we continue to fly higher and test the support of 1550 1560 now the european equities uh, rally on friday post draghi was very very confusing and that was really being the the story behind that really was that uh, mr draghi indicated a potential uh, bottom bottom in the uh, the actual uh, deflationary cycle okay and therefore indicated stronger growth going forward and and hence the reason why individuals are now buying european equities on the basis of of stronger growth now that narrative really doesn't uh, make or doesn't really uh, sound very logical given the fact that he has qe if if economic growth had bottomed out okay it is starting to move higher then why is he still obviously enacting this qe surely he would start to obviously indicate talk of tapering so again uh, this is why the euro usd certainly is starting to rise now on the back of a potential talk there was a leak via reuters as well that he may well go ahead with a potential rate increase uh, and then pair back uh, the uh, the actual stimulus so it's interesting okay interesting any talk or any indication of mr draghi now uh, releasing there or closing the qe tap and actually starting tapering and even potentially raise raise rates let alone taper he's actually talking about rates so again this is all net net negative from my understanding and my interpretation a stronger euro certainly is negative for the uh, the actual market itself so if you have a hawkish uh, ecb now uh, versus a uh, extremely extremely hawkish priced in 100 percent priced in fed uh, the euro really is going to start rising okay it's really going to start rising okay it's because the equation of the ecb or the uh, the the status quo that the ecb is the dove and the fed is a hawk is now being questioned okay now you have almost a 50 50 trade where the, the ecb now is a hawk and the fed is a hawk so again which one hasn't been priced in surely it'll be the euro starting to move higher so just bear that in mind certainly something certainly uh, something to consider and don't be surprised if european equities start to reverse sharply this week okay looking at the european 350 now look at topping tail okay so post draghi everything remains bearish uh, the hawkish stance really is the main narrative okay stronger growth it's irrelevant okay and uh, you certainly have put in a potential topping tail on the european 350 and therefore one would expect further weakness okay now the 60 minute chart you can see a lower high okay no higher high as of yet okay so a lower high indicates that the bull, bull trend certainly is over and you are now looking to potentially flush lower down to uh, support at 1505 and then support at 1490 and potentially even lower so yeah, the s p 350 is certainly bearish okay looking at the german dax now let's look at the german dax okay let's look at the weekly chart first and foremost a uh, weekly chart really is in no man's land if anything it put in a doji candle which generally indicates a reversal and uh, exhaustion of the current trend uh, daily chart you certainly have a double top and a rising contracting wedge pattern which generally is considered to be bearish given the fact that we've put in a double top intraday with an unfilled gap below at 11 8 30 certainly doesn't bode well or is a good sign for the bull so just bear that in mind okay a uh, 60 minute chart you can see that we initially thrusted higher we held that gap level and we've started to move lower now there is that unfilled gap below that remains a real target given the fact that you have mr draghi now hawkish and that's the main catalyst for that to, uh, gap to close and now you have this potential hns formation so any potential thrust higher on the german dax really is a shorting opportunity so just bear that in mind okay H&S formation brewing on the German DAX on a 60 minute chart. The 10 minute chart really lower lows, lower highs. The real base is seen at 11,920. So anybody who wants to be short really needs to be careful around the 11,920 zone for a potential short squeeze. Okay, now let's cross reference the uh, the German DAX with the uh, with the pairs uh, for or the uh, the meet key drivers of the German DAX. You have the MDAX 50. Okay, the MDAX 50 ever since it put is putting its double top certainly remains weak to me. Okay, uh, no real higher high here indicating a potential exhaustion and a top on the German DAX. We have a lower high. Okay, so uh, if I connect these key diagonal trend lines together or key diagonal uh, uh, pivot highs together, okay, so you have a potential unfilled gap above. Watch out for that unfilled gap. Okay and any potential thrust higher will be capped there okay and then you have multiple unfilled gaps below so from my perspective the german dax 
MDX50 certainly remains weak, lower highs, and therefore looking to make lower lows, and therefore is in his uh, risk negative. All tech share, again, this is mainly the tech sector for the German DAX. Uh, and uh, where do we stand here? Now, the daily chart really is overtly bullish, very, very strong, okay? Certainly no bearish argument can be made there. Even on the weekly chart, no bearish argument can be made. 60 minute chart continues its higher highs and higher lows. So technology certainly remains an index that really is very, very bullish. Okay, certainly no bearish argument can be made there. Let's move on to the French CAC now. The French CAC really is a short trade setup for me, looking to potentially move lower now. Uh, the daily chart certainly put in a key topping tail, rising contracting wedge pattern certainly remains bearish. You have the unfilled gap at 4860, that will be your downside target. The uh, weekly chart, you're into resistance as well. You can see we're holding resistance, horizontal resistance, and therefore indicating risk negative. Okay, so French CAC, especially given the political uncertainty via Le Pen, okay, uh, uh, her rhetoric with regards to going back to the um, the actual um, uh, currency, the old uh, French currency, certainly it doesn't go go well in terms of the franc. Okay. Uh, a daily chart or 60 minute chart should i say really from my perspective yes you have made a higher high so that needs to be respected there is gap fill below at uh, 4980 again that needs to be respected so from my understanding really any potential pivot high or revisit of the high at 5020 5000 really is a shorting opportunity down to gap fill at 4980 if that fails to hold and the next potential support is, uh, is seen at uh, 4940. So certainly looking for a flush lower on the French CAC. Now we can cross-reference the CAC with the uh, the actual CAC mid and small. Okay, so if I go to the weekly chart here. Okay, so uh, the weekly chart certainly remains bullish. Nothing, uh, no argument there for a bearish move as such. Okay, daily chart at the moment certainly remains very stellar. If I connect the highs together, we certainly are touching that pivot high. Again, it's all about that rising contracting wedge type pattern. So again, let's see how far we can sustain this. Now, it's very, very impressive, the uh, daily chart. Okay, certainly have broken higher as well on Friday, even after Mr. Draghi was hawkish. So again, impressive, okay, impressive to say the least. But give, especially given the political uncertainty with regards to the French election and, and uh, Miss Le Pen causing problems in terms of her, uh, shall we say, uh, very bearish rhetoric. Uh, again, how will the market respond? Thus far, it certainly seems to be responding from a uh, bullish perspective. Market isn't uh, discounting in the hawkish sense from Draghi. It'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to the euro spiking on Friday's night, Friday evening session to 1.07. Okay, so the CAC mid of uh, mid and small certainly is showing resilience and showing strength. Okay, and we'll certainly need to see a further a breakdown there, really, to certainly uh, convince me. Uh, the French CAC really is uh, at a potential uh, top. Okay, so certainly something to consider there. The CAC volatility index certainly broke lower. Uh, again, not exactly a good sign. If you are a um, uh, you you are a bear. Okay, so certainly a breakdown on the CAC volatility index. Uh, but I'm very surprised, especially given the uh, the actual uh, uncertainty regarding Le Pen. This market still certainly seems to be going higher and grinding higher, even with Mr. Draghi now, so you have to go whammy. Okay, the Fed raising rates, oil certainly moving lower. Impressive, very, very impressive to say the least. Okay, so you have to take the uh, hats off to the French CAC, really, from my understanding. Okay, now let's move on to the FTSE 100 now. Let's see exactly where the FTSE is headed. Okay, for Monday's trading session. Weekly chart on the FTSE at the moment, you are still looking at a rising contracting wedge pattern given the fact that uh, you're looking at exhaustion here, so just bear that in mind. Daily chart, topping tail, okay. No real continuation here. This green candle really has been compromised with that pivot low at uh, 7260. And from my understanding, really, you are looking at a potential failed bull flag. A failed pattern generally indicates an emotive move in the opposite direction. Especially given the fact that Mr. Theresa May now is going for the potential uh, uh, Article 50, being triggered on Tuesday possibly, okay, uh, and again, there's no real uh, game plan, okay, so again, looking for weakness, for continuation in the weakness as well, given the fact that we put in a pivot high at 7370, looking to potentially test the lows again, back down to this 200MA at 7300, okay, especially given the fact that oil prices remain weak, 
and we did actually continue to plunge on Friday. Okay, so uh, looking at previous resistance equals support of 7360. If we continue higher, then you have 7370 and 7375 as resistance. All key resistance zones, 7365 as well on this diagonal trend line. All zones that I'll be looking to short and potentially retest that 200 MA below at 7330 and resistance or support at 7320, okay, in terms of FTSE 100. So certainly looking for weaker price action the FTSE going into Monday's trading session. Look at the Euro stocks now. Uh, Euro stocks looking at a weekly chart first and foremost remain in that uh, um, really uh, unmarked territory in a no man's land. Okay, again, an argument can be made that we can continue to thrust higher back to up to 3520 before we start a reversal. That certainly is a possibility, especially if markets are interpreting Mr. Draghi's hawky stance as being strong uh, as a, a bullish signal for economic growth going forward. Uh, the daily chart is telling you another picture though. You have a topping tail pattern. A topping tail generally indicates a reversal. I'm looking for the markets to move lower. 60-minute chart of uh, the euro stocks. You're looking at retesting that previous resistance equal support. You're looking at gap fill at 3.410, okay, and 3.441 really is your double top scenario. So any retest back to 3.441, looking for risk off, okay. 10-minute chart at the moment. Again, you have gap fill at 3.410. Uh, you have uh, 200 MA support at 3.400. Let's see exactly how this market unfolds okay going forward any potential uh, move higher 3430 uh, 3445 3440 looking for risk aversion looking for the markets to uh, make a move lower that's my understanding and that's my interpretation thus far okay so let's bring up the chart of oil as well uh, looking at crude you're looking at potential support around the 30 47 to 46 level uh, again, that will be net, net, net negative, okay, for the markets themselves. Projecting the S&P 500 weakness as well. Uh, the daily chart of the S&P 500 finishes with a doji candle, which isn't exactly a bullish signal. Okay, weekly chart as well. Certainly seems exhausted now, looking like it wants to reverse. The 60-minute chart is looking ever more of a H&S formation, really with your left shoulder here, your head obviously being triggered there. And now looking for the right shoulder to look potentially look to look flush lower. So again, let's keep an eye on that. Okay, certainly a bearish pattern there as well. No high highs, and the S and P. We certainly held gap fill. We bounced up. We bounced off gap fill impressively. Okay, in terms of the S and P, we have an unfilled gap above at twenty three eighty three. Then we have double top at uh, twenty three seventy six and resistance at twenty three seventy eight. So let's watch out for those zones. Okay, we have hit a pivot low of twenty three fifty four fifty five gap fill very impressively so let's see how the S&P 500 fares if we start to move lower then that will obviously exert further uh, bearish price action on the FTSE and the euro stocks as well okay given the fact that the uh, European indices certainly are shining uh, compared to the rest okay looking at the uh, FTSE 250 as well uh, you are above that previous resistance equal support but this bull flag certainly seems like it's lost uh, lost fuel okay uh, again let's see how we play in terms of the markets you certainly have a double top on the 60 minute chart that certainly is being held and that will remain resistance for now and therefore exert weakness on the FTSE 100 so just bear that in mind FTSE 250 double top and therefore looking for weakness on the FTSE 100 itself as well okay now let's just see if I can see any, any sectors here or that, or do I have any sectors at present no no real sectors okay no real sectors at present just bear in mind that the commodity index is now coming into support as well okay so the commodity index is into support you are looking at the FTSE being in support so certainly something to take into consideration especially the um, energy sector going forward okay if the if the Fed is certainly uh, uh, priced in the full bearish news okay uh, although the uh, the actual 60 minute chart at the moment is showing potential support in the dollar if the dollar continues to get crushed here okay then you will see the commodity currencies are gaining ground and the commodity sector gaining ground as well okay we haven't tested 138 so certainly a possibility that being tested with march's rate hike okay so a number of scenarios and uh, a uh, multiple uh, potential uh, ev eventualities as well now the nikkei at the moment is back into that key resistance level that's 19600 if we see the Nikkei break out above 19,600 up to 1990, 19,900, 2,000, again, that will be bullish for the S&P. So, again, you need to be aware of all the scenarios. I mean, if the S&P and the Nikkei is breaking out, you have to respect the bulls, okay? 
If the Nikkei starts to break down, holds that 19,600 resistance level, then you are looking at risk aversion. Also looking at the Shanghai at the moment, Shanghai now coming under potential support. You've got gap fill support below on the Shanghai. So if the Shanghai starts to push higher from here, again, can send European equities higher as well and, and US equities too. So again, just keep an normal mind. Let's see how Asian markets react. Okay, let's see if in terms of economic data. Let's see how the currencies react, the commodities, and then I'll adjust my trading accordingly. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye.